Hi there! Today, with help of quick sketches, I'll explain the main features of classical orders. But first I should explain what the term classical orders actually means. What are classical orders? Decorative systems of constructional architectural elements developed by ancient Greeks and Romans. Now you know! The construction of buildings in ancient Greece is very simple vertical posts and horizontal beams. But instead of copying Stonehenge, which they knew nothing about, they developed three main decorative systems – Doric, Ionic and Corinthian. Actually, these ideas were based on earlier used wooden constructions and adapted for stone buildings. These orders evolved quite independently, regionally, but then they spread and gained popularity all over ancient Greece and sometimes were even used in one same building. Let's start with the oldest and most simple – Doric order. This was the heaviest style of all three. Columns were placed very densely. The distance between two columns was only slightly larger than diameter of the column's bottom. Also, the columns itself were quite stubby. The height of columns was initially only about 4 to 5 times the diameter of the column's bottom. Columns consisted of only two parts – a shaft and a head. No base. Well, Romans added a base while adapting this style, but I'll get back to it in a while. The shaft is profiled in a very smart way. On a flat drawing it doesn't look that brilliant, but this so-called enthesis in about one-third of the shaft's height has its explanation. It's kind of swollen in order to look straight, when a small human being is looking at the building. Optical illusions are strange phenomena. And why is the shaft getting more and more slender above enthesis? To make an impression of a higher building as it emphasized the natural illusion of things getting smaller the higher above us they are. There is vertical fluting with 16 to 24 grooves creating sharp edges. This is a very characteristic feature for Doric order. Later you will see that shafts are slightly different in the case of other orders. The head, called capital, is round and kind of flattened, as if it was squeezed under burden of ceiling beams. And above it, there is a square plate. Above there are three parts of entablature. Plain architrave, frieze and finally a cornice. Frieze is the most intriguing part, so let's stay here for a moment. Here we have triglyphs, these strange rectangles with two grooves. It may seem like a strange idea to decorate every entablature the same way, and why on earth with this particular pattern? There should be infinite number of possible patterns. But let's remember that it originates from wooden constructions and these triglyphs symbolize wooden beams which were slightly protruding in regular intervals. Spaces between triglyphs, called metopes, were often decorated with bas reliefs presenting some fascinating mythological scenes. Between an architrave and a frieze there is a small bar with additional bars under each triglyph and six drops, in Latin known as gutta. Again, they may seem to be another absurdly added decoration repeated in every single Doric building, but they are meant to resemble pegs used in older wooden constructions. Cornices are equipped with three rows of six drops placed over both triglyphs and metopes. As you can see, there was not much space for creativity, as many elements were strictly defined and named with strange Latin names. However, sculptures, bas reliefs and paintings were real fields to show off. The stone surface was often plastered and painted in diverse vibrant colors. To be honest, I cannot fully imagine those elegant marble, almost white buildings in colorful versions, but maybe you can. Just keep that in mind if you are making concept designs of ancient Greek or Roman cities. Now just a few words about the second order. Ionic order. 
This order is clearly more sophisticated than Doric order, not only in terms of details, but also proportions. Columns are much more slender and placed in larger intervals. When we compare cross-sections of Doric and Ionic columns, we can see that fluting is slightly different. Ionic grooves are deeper but thinner, so there are some spaces between them. A more obvious difference is the presence of a base. It consists of two convex disks and one concave between them. Additionally, they are divided with thin bars. That's the most popular form of base, though some variations were also accepted. And there is no way you could miss the main difference. Capital with volutes. What are these volutes? What do they symbolize and what's their origin? No living human being know the answer, but some have theories. Ram's horns, fragment of a clover, heavily transformed lotus flower, or just a geometrical eye-pleasing form. Entablature consists again of three main parts. Architrave, this time divided into three horizontal parts. Freeze, plain or with bas reliefs, but there are no triangles this time. It's separated from architrave with a thin cornice. And finally a cornice. Again, there were some variations here, but there was a very popular motif of egg and dart, egg and tongue, egg and arrow, egg and anchor. None of them sounds really convincing to me, especially the egg part. Corinthian order. This style is even more slender than Ionic. Besides that, the only actual difference is the capital with Acanthus plant. It's hard to say for sure why this capital has this particular form. A legend says that a young girl died and her nanny left a basket with toys on her grave. In spring, Acanthus plant overgrew the basket and a passing sculptor found that form so appealing that he decided to immortalize it as a column's capital. Anyhow, it's more probable that it's just an advanced and realistic version of Egyptian papyrus capital. Not so interesting as the basket legend, but more probable. These three were Greek orders, and Romans added their very own two orders to this noble group. Tuscan order. Let's be honest, it's just a good old Doric order, but with a plain shaft and a simple base, a square plinth, and a rounded torus. Composite order. Another copycat. A combination of Ionic and Corinthian capital. Unlike Ionic capital, here all four sides are identical. And here we have those five. Why are these orders so important for history of architecture? Excellent question. They tend to reappear here and there, now and then. Renaissance, Baroque, Classicism, Neoclassicism, primarily all over Europe and North America. No other styles were so widespread in time and space. And that's the answer. <laughs>